All right, today I'm working on a 4L60E on the bench here out of a 2001 Chevy pickup. And I just kind of wanted to go over what the problem was with it. Uh, this moved, with the exception of reverse, this moved forward in all ranges, or it wanted to move forward. So if you would put this in park, say, the, well, the car's in park, you start it up, the car would lurch forward. In reverse, it wouldn't move. It actually bound up. And in neutral, you can drive this car down the block like you're driving it down the road, no problem. And all of the drive ranges, of course, it'll drive. So I want to let you know what I found with that. And also why that happens, why it moves forward. And, and you know, we like to say it moves forward in neutral. Uh, if it could, it would move forward in park because when we got in the car, you know, when the guy came here, he says, my car has no reverse. So when we got in the car, you know, it started up, it, you know, it wasn't parked. So it's really not going to go, but, you know, the car lurched forward like it wanted to move. And right away I knew this thing probably moves forward in neutral. Sure enough, I put it in neutral, I drove it down the block with him, and I said, look, I'm in neutral. Uh, so I kind of want to go, I want to go over that. And also going through this transmission, I found a broken spring in the valve body that you know maybe sometimes could be overlooked maybe it's checked maybe it's not checked i check every one of them of course as a standard rebuild procedure um, and occasionally i do find this particular spring broken it is behind the three two downshift solenoid and i i have the broken spring here and i have a sonics replacement and this so talking about the spring now uh, that basically there's there's uh, two types uh, 96 well let's see 93 to 95 it was PWM so this spring will not work okay uh, it'll work only on the on off style which is the second design and which is 96 and up so if you have a spring broken on 93 to 95 4L60E, this spring will not work. I'm not sure, honestly, if Sonics makes one of those. But this one, you know, occasionally, I check every one. Occasionally, I do find it broken. And the fact that Sonics makes the spring, you know, it, it somewhat is a, is a common issue. And if you find the spring broken, it can cause a 3-2 bind up, or it can also cause the band to overheat so as uh, if you're tearing one of these down 96 and up, well you should check it all the time but basically 96 and up uh, you can get a replacement spring and it's something that definitely should be checked uh, anytime you have this valve body out or you're working on this transmission um, so I'll show you where that is located and I want to go over the uh, the reason why this moved forward in all ranges and pretty much these this is I'll get a close-up shot of this but these are the forward frictions and I have one I have one clutch disc that is welded to a steel so pretty much this thing is locked on and it's the same thing pretty much as having the piston apply the clutch so the car can drive forward so no matter what you're in, this car is going to want to move forward. So of course, let's start with park and park. The car will lurch forward. It can't move forward because the car is in park. And when you put it in reverse, the reason why it will not move in reverse is because the car wants to move forward because the forward clutch is locked on. And in reverse, the, the reverse clutches get applied. So between the two of them, it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, if you just sit there and race it and race it up and this clutch disc breaks loose from the steel, then fine, it'll go backwards. But uh, when you try it, you know, it just, it was just bound up. It just wouldn't go anywhere. And then when you put it neutral, when everything is released, this of course is locked on. So it's the same thing as having the clutch applied and you can drive the car down the street. So, 
that's pretty much uh, what goes on uh, when these clutches are locked on. Uh, if the low, if the low reverse or the reverse clutch was locked on, the car would not move forward in drive, but you put it in reverse and it's going to back up. Same, same deal. Um, except the car really probably wouldn't move in any of the drive ranges except the neutral and reverse. It'll go backwards. You start it up, it's going to lurch backwards, but not go. So it will be the same thing. So let me give you a close up shot of this. I want to show you the spring and valve. I'll show you where it goes. I got the Sonics uh, Transtar's part number, but you know, you just go on Sonics website, it's pretty good. Um, and you click on transmission and you can type in the search or in the box 4L60E and it'll come up with the whole list and you scroll down until you see the springs and you'll see the spring listed there. Uh, all right, so let me get a little closer and we'll do this and this way I can finish this up. And next I got a, I got a couple of 62 TEs to do. I still got a couple of Hondas to do. Um, I got a Pathfinder RE5 that's got to come out. So still pretty, uh, pretty busy here, still a little backed up. And just trying to get these things done and out. And thank God uh, everything is going nice and smooth. Not too many issues. Um, so we can get this work done. All right, so let me get a little closer here. And we'll look at that, look at the valve body. And just want to do kind of like a, um, you know, more like a quick tip video. Uh, basically on this broken spring for the 3-2 downshift. Because uh, it is something that... If you're working on one of these again, you know, it should be checked. Um, maybe one out of every 10 or 12 transmissions I do of these 4L60s, and we do a lot of them here, I find that spring broken. All right, so it's not too often, but it is an issue where Sonics does sell the spring. So definitely it's something that should be checked. And, you know, just in case you, if you're not sure what solenoid it is, I can show you the solenoid and an easy way to identify the solenoid because it looks almost the same as the TCC PWM solenoid and they're both on the top of the valve body, one on each side. So I can show you how to identify that solenoid. I have my two replacement new ones here. All right, so let me get a little closer and we will start. All right, first, so here's the forward, what's left of them anyway. So I did new, new clutches and steels. Okay, and here is the clutch that is totally locked on here. All right, so I just got it off. But this was my problem. This thing was kind of like welded here and you put this thing in drive, like I said, it's just like uh, or reverse or neutral. It's just like the clutch is applied because it's locked on here, like the piston is applying it. And it'll just go forward in all ranges. If it was, again, reverse, it would go backwards uh, in neutral. And in reverse and in drive, it wouldn't move. But that's uh, what's left of that clutch disc. So that is forward, uh, the result of this was it moves forward in neutral N and no reverse because it was binding up in reverse with the two sets of clutches on at the same time. Okay. All right, so here is my broken spring. Okay, and again, that's the 3 2 downshift. Here is the valve. You put the valve and spring, and then you put the uh, solenoid in. Uh, here is the replacement. I don't know if you can see that, but that's, uh, that's Transtar's part number, and this is Sonic's part number.
Okay, so here is the spring that Sonics makes. The replacement, again, 96 and up. Uh, will not work on the first design. <clears throat> and you know what? I have actually a picture here because this separator, the separator plate on the 460 E's 96 and up, well, pretty much uh, Transco makes them for, for all years, and I always like to change it. And this one here is the 96 and up, and they show here's the second type, which is the one I have, and here is the first type. So it will not work on the first type, but it will work on the second type. Okay, and pretty much the spring just goes right over, just like that. All right, so here's the broken one. So let's get rid of this. And now, the valve and spring and solenoid are in this line up here. All right, so we'll put that in. So here are my, and this is how I identify the solenoid. So here is the TCC PWM and the 3.2 downshift solenoid. Okay, so there's no, there's no bottom like lip here on the TCC PWM solenoid. Okay, and there is one on the 3.2 downshift. So that's how I identify the solenoid. Just uh, like if you look, glance at it real quick, if it has this bottom lip, it is the 3-2 downshift solenoid. Okay, so then, let me just move this down. Sometimes you gotta fiddle with it to get it in. Okay. All right, so we're in here. I'll just let it relax a little bit. I'll get my solenoid. Again, with the lip here, we put some grease on the O-rings. Okay, and where is my clip? And that's it. All right, also, whenever you're working on these, I did believe I mentioned it before, but this solenoid is a common uh, or standard rebuild procedure to change it. All right, here is the old one. And a lot of times what can happen is these snouts can crack that you can't see, and it can cause the converter slip code like an 894 or an 1870. And here is the old TC, uh, I'm sorry, 3-2 downshift uh, solenoid. And here is the new one. Oops, that's wrong. Okay, so the solenoid is in. And, all right, so here is my TCC PWM solenoid that I always change on every overhaul that I do because it is common, this is the old one, and it is common for and I know I've mentioned this before in other 4L60 videos, these snouts like to crack that, you know, to the point where you can't see it, but you will get converted slip codes, 894, 1870, and here is the old 3-2 uh, downshift solenoid. That gets changed every overhaul too. So, you know, I just wanted to make you aware of that spring that cracks, uh, it is something if you're getting into, if you're working on the transmission or you maybe have to have to take the valve body down or whatever the case may be for some reason, it is worth just popping that solenoid out to check the spring. All right, and again, it's not too 
you know, not every one of them uh, that I see broken, but it does have to be checked. And that's about it. Again, this is a 2001 Chevy pickup, uh, 4L60E, and again, the main reason why we got this in is because this was locked forward and had no reverse, and we saw that clutch that was locked onto that steel plate. It is no longer locked on because I peeled it off. But that was our problem. That's the reason why we got the job in. All right, so I'm gonna finish up this trans, and when the guys get in, I'll be able to install it. All right, I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.